Hello everyone. Oops, almost lost my microphone there. Hello everyone, my name is Ian and you're watching Big Rock Moto. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And if you're new here and you like this kind of content, I hope you'll consider subscribing. Now, when you hear the word supermoto, you might think of racers sliding bikes around a dirt and paved racetrack. However, if you're tall enough to ride them, supermotors can make really good beginner bikes and really good all-around motorcycles because of their upright, comfortable ergonomics, their high ground clearance, their ruggedness, uh, they take crashes very well, and they're just very well suited to a lot of different types of riding. So for 2023, Kawasaki has built further on their KLX 230 platform and given us this bike, the KLX 230 SM or supermoto. This bike is really quite affordable at just over $5,000 brand new, and it's not too tall or too powerful or too difficult to ride to scare off more beginner riders. So today we're gonna do a full review of this bike. Let's go. All right, let's talk about the models and pricing and things like that. Now, before I get into that, I think we should define what is a supermoto and don't be embarrassed if you don't know because they're not the most popular bike. So supermoto really came out of a style of racing that started back in the 1970s. And basically uh, they took dirt bikes, like a dirt bike, upright chassis, tall chassis like this, and they put on more street oriented wheels and tires. So supermoto bikes are going to have street tires are going to be wider than their dirt bike counterparts. They're going to have bigger brakes and they're just going to be made a little bit more to go on the pavement, but also still have the suspension travel and ground clearance and kind of ruggedness to do a little bit of dirt riding as well. That brings us to this bike, the 2023 KLX 230 Supermoto. So the base price on the USA for this bike is $5,299. If you want ABS, you'll have to pay $300 more and that's $5,599. Now, should you get the ABS? I'm gonna say for most of you, probably yes, and here's why. If you're more of a beginner rider or if you're just more of an average rider using this bike on the street, having that safety net of those analog brakes could really save your life one day in a panic situation. Now, there's a few of you who might not wanna get the ABS. If you're actually a more experienced rider, who wants to slide the bike around a lot and doesn't necessarily need or want the safety net of the ABS because you're at that experience level or you wanna use it on an actual supermoto track, then maybe don't get the ABS. And I say that because Kawasaki did not include an off switch for the ABS, which I'll get to this later in the review, but I think that's kind of a disappointment seeing as the KLX 230S dual sport model does have that off switch. So a little bit strange that this bike doesn't have that. Now, where does this fit into Kawasaki's lineup? So based on the 230 air-cooled engine, this bike has less power, less suspension travel, it doesn't have the adjustable suspension compared to the KLX 300. So Kawasaki has the KLX 300 Dual Sport and the KLX 230, I mean, sorry, KLX 300 uh, Supermoto bike. The 300s, like I mentioned, longer travel, more adjustable suspension, quite a bit more power, um, you know, and it's about $1,000 more expensive. Those bikes are also a little bit taller than these 230s. All right, so seat height and riding position on the KLX 230 Supermoto. Now, Supermoto bikes are not the shortest bike. So if you're a shorter rider, more vertically challenged, as I like to say, Supermoto can be kind of tough for you. And the reason this is, is because they're basically dirt bikes. So you have the high ground clearance, the high chassis, the long travel suspension, which brings the whole bike up in the air. Now, this bike has a seat height of 33.9 inches or about 860 millimeters. So it's between, if you want to know for reference, it's between their KLX 230S model and their regular KLX 230 in terms of seat height. Let me show you how this looks in terms of the riding position and the seat height. So I am uh, 178 centimeters tall, about 5 foot 10. I weigh about 200 pounds, about 90 kilograms, 32 inch leg inseam. And if I kind of try to put my feet down here, I can flat foot this bike on both sides. Um, but you can see here, it's using most of my leg to get to the ground. So if you're one of those shorter riders, you're definitely gonna wanna sit on this in the showroom before making a commitment because you know these supermotos, they're, they're not short. But that being said, for a supermoto, this is one of the lowest you're gonna get. So I've got uh, my wife Maggie here. Thank you, Maggie, for making time to do these uh, reviews with me. So we're gonna jump on. I wanna show the passenger seating because a lot of people, I mean, it's not gonna be many of you that wanna take a passenger on this bike, but for short trips around town, you might wanna do it. And it does have the passenger pegs. So the seat's not that long, it's not that wide, but let's jump on it to show how this is. So I'm an average sized guy. Maggie's pretty small, pretty light. So let me jump on. I have to move all the way forward to the gas tank. Now Maggie, why don't you try to get on? Okay. 
I'll try not to fall off too. Okay, all right. Wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. Here's the thing, this is low, so for me to like just climb over is easy. easy. Yeah, because the bike's low to the ground. Right, yeah. exactly. But this is, oh my God, I feel like I'm sitting on a... On what? I don't know how to describe it. Like, it's just so small, the seats. I feel like I'm about to fall the off seats, anytime. The seat's narrow. Yes, yeah. very narrow. Yeah, and but you do have pegs there. You don't have anywhere to put your hands really either, except on me, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have... Oh, hey, hang on, hang on. So, yeah, so there I took the side stand up. So that's, that's our position there. So you can see it's a little bit tight, and I don't think she'd be very comfortable for more than about 10 minutes back there. So just keep that in mind if you're going to do passenger stuff. Um, thanks, Maggie. Okay. Okay, you can get off. Okay, can I really get off? Yeah. Okay. It's low though. That's nice, but seriously, I just could not sit on it at all. I feel that I'm about to fall off. Okay, thanks Maggie. Okay. All right, let's cover the specs of the KLX 230 Supermoto and then we'll take you on a tour, show you some of the features. So let's start with the engine. So it's the same engine. If you watch my review of the KLX 230, it's the same engine as that. So you're looking at a fuel injected, air cooled, four stroke, single cylinder engine, single overhead cam, 9.4 to one compression ratio, 20 horsepower or 15 kilowatts, and about 12 foot pounds of torque or 16 Newton meters, hooked up to a six speed transmission with a wet clutch. Let's look at the suspension. So on the front suspension, you can see here, you have an upside down inverted fork, which is different than the dual sport model. You have eight inches of travel here, but there are no adjustments on the front suspension. Back here on the rear shock, you do have a rear mono shock. You have 8.6 .6 inches, excuse me, of travel, and there's also no adjustments. Actually, you know what? Let me take that back. There is a preload adjustment, uh, manual preload adjustment um, on this bike. Now, one of the things that makes this a supermoto versus a dual sport, of course, are going to be the wheels and tires. So Kawasaki went with a 17 inch rear and a 17 inch front. Now the front tire is a 110 70 17 and the rear tire is a 120 70 17. These are spoked wheels and they do have tubes in them. The braking system is also a big differentiator between this and a dual sport model. So being this supermoto bike, you get a much larger front rotor. It's a 300 millimeter disc, twin kiss piston caliper and of course this bike has the ABS system. On the rear brake you get the single 220 millimeter rotor and a single piston caliper. Now because this is based on a dirt bike it is basically a dirt bike chassis just with the different wheels and tires you get that additional ground clearance. So you get nine inches or 228 millimeters of ground clearance. Now let's cover the weight. So the weight of this bike is 295 pounds or 133 kilograms fully fueled up uh, ready to ride. Now, if you add the ABS, it only adds about two pounds or about one kilogram. So really no significant weight penalty to get the ABS. Fuel capacity, you can see the fuel tank here. You've got two gallons or about 7.5 liters. Now these little engines are very uh, easy on fuel. So you can go, you know, you'll get 60 or 70 miles a gallon. So you can definitely go over hundred miles on a tank of gas. All right, let's take a tour around the Supermoto starting at the front. We've talked about the wheels, tire suspension already. Uh, front fender, the ABS sticker there. LED headlight, I think that's really cool to get an LED headlight at this price point. There's a lot more expensive bikes that have halogen headlights, so I really like to see that. Incandescent turn signals, we'll finish up with the controls at the end. You can see the, I like the blacked out look on the Supermoto, like the black engine, the black wheels, swing arm, stuff like that. That's a lot different than a dual sport. I think it looks a lot more modern like this. Um, you can see here, there's no radio, radiator on this bike. So you've got kind of a lot of extra space here. Spark plug engine, exhaust, uh, oil level window there, rear brake lever, foot pegs, which I think you can take, yeah, you can take these rubber things out if you wanted to. Passenger pegs there, which bolt on to the frame. Let's see, swing arm, like I mentioned, that's been blacked out. We've talked about the brake wheels, everything like that. Exhaust, nice heat shield on the exhaust. Coming back here, license plate hanger, turn signal, tail light, um, incandescent, you don't get LED on the back tail light, chain final drive, kickstand, shifter, nothing. I mean, it's basic. There's not much really to talk about. The seat here, which is kind of hard and narrow, not very comfortable. Now, 
let's come up here to the controls. You can see the mirrors. Uh, they could. I wish the mirrors came out a little bit further. That is one complaint I have. You don't have any adjustments on the control levers. But that's to be expected at this price point. You have basic controls here. What bugs me is you've got this empty switch where you could have the ABS off switch, but they didn't do that. Kind of disappointing. Horn, uh, lights there, stop, start, run, traditional key, and then to get gas, very simple mechanism there. All seems very well made. Now, the dashboard, so this is the same dash as the KLR650 and the KLX230S I just tested. So you have a fuel gauge, you have a clock, you have an odometer, you can also have two trip meters there, and I think that's about it, yeah. And then you've got speedometer, there's no gear position indicator, although there looks like there's space for one. I think that's an overheating light, which hopefully you never see that. And then your indicator lights on the side for the ABS systems, neutral lights, turn signals, things like that. Now let's briefly cover the maintenance requirements on the KLX230. So according to the owner's manual, which I went online and looked up on Kawasaki's website, they want you to do an oil change every 7,500 miles or 12,000 kilometers. Now, I know modern oils are good and modern engines are good, but that seems like a pretty long oil change interval to me for a motorcycle, but that's what Kawasaki's saying. They also want you to change the spark plug and also do a valve clearance check at that same interval. So kind of interesting there that the major service and minor service is all really at that same 7,500 or 12,000 kilometer mi interval. All right, riding the Kawasaki KLX230 Supermoto. So I just got done testing the KLX230S, the lower dual sport version, and of course this bike reminds me a lot of that. But there are some major differences obviously in terms of the suspension and the wheels and tires and just how the bike feels. So fuel injection starts up perfectly. That's the nice thing about having that versus a carburetor where it doesn't always want to start like on a DRZ. So give her the beans. Very short gearing. <laughs> full power, full power, full power. So this is way too much fun. You know, it doesn't have a lot of power, obviously. 20 horsepower, like 12 foot-pounds of torque, okay. It sounds like not a lot, but below 50 miles an hour, that's fine. That's all you really need, right? And the fun thing for me as a more experienced rider with riding a bike like this is that I can, I can use all the power almost all the time and the bike's not doing anything crazy. So it's good for newer riders, obviously. I can't do that because I don't have enough power. Okay, let's test the highway cruising. First, let's do zero to 60 to zero. 50. 60. Hard on the brakes. Whoa, these brakes are great. Really good brakes. Come on, baby, come on, 62, 65, 70, 70. So my rev limiter kicks in. It's the exact same as the KLX 230 Dual Sport model. The rev limiter kicks in at 74 miles per hour in top gear. So that's gonna be all she wrote, 74 miles per hour. So don't buy this bike if you're planning on, you know, traveling above 70 miles an hour for any length of time. It's just not going to happen. But if it's more urban riding or some highway riding below 70, 70 miles an hour, you'll be okay. Uh, what else should we talk about? So the mirrors are fine. They could stick out a little bit further, just like on the dual sport model. I mentioned that. I like the dash, really big speedometer. Fuel gauge is nice. 
Uh, what else? So when you ride a supermoto, it's like being on a dirt bike. So the disadvantage of that, well, okay, let me back up. The advantage of that is it's fun, right? You you throw the bike around, you can ride it off road if you want. You know, you've got the suspension travel, you've got the ground clearance. The bike is super nimble handling, that's a lot of fun. The disadvantages are that you're up high in the air, so you're up in the wind blast, obviously, no wind protection. It's pretty tall, so you've got kind of a high center of gravity, and if you're a shorter rider, it's hard to reach the ground. One of the other disadvantages is the seat. So it's a dirt bike style seat, which is very narrow and very hard. And it feels like you have a razor blade halfway up your bum. Um, that's the best way I can describe it. It's, I mean, my butt hurts already. Uh, so yeah, the seat's, the seat's not good, but that's true of all supermoto bikes. Going back to those brakes though, I mean, it's a one finger brake on this bike. Like it's so good, so much stopping power. For a two piston caliper, I'm really impressed with that, but the bike is light, it's under 300 pounds. Uh, and it has that big, big disc, big rotor on it. So that's nice. The gearing is very short because it has to make the most of the power from the small engine. So I do appreciate that it's six speeds because it gives you good gear ratios as opposed to a five speed gearbox on like something like the DRZ. Let's get after it a little bit here. <laughs> yeah, boy. Full power. Come on. Oh my god, dude, this bike is so amazing in the corners. I mean, you have so much grip from the supermoto wheels and the street tires. You could really go crazy with this bike. Now, it's not, you know, you don't have the power that you do from, you know, a street bike or a more powerful bike, but for learning handling and becoming a better rider in the corners, which is where most people, I think, have the most deficiencies, this is an amazing bike for that. The engine doesn't have a lot of torque, so sometimes you'll find yourself in a gear too high and you just have to downshift to get back into the power. And talking about the horsepower, where you notice the horsepower deficiency is not really the zero to 50 mile an hour kind of stuff. It's, let's say you want to accelerate from 50 to 70, right, to pass a car. That's where not having, you know, much horsepower, that's where it can get to you. It's not so much at the lower speed, so just keep that in mind. Oh my God, I just want to do this all day. I just have the throttle wide open. Gearbox shifts really well. I'm telling you right now, this is a lot of bike for the money to get this much fun and this good of a chassis and suspension and brakes and the versatility and the fuel injection and the Kawasaki quality this is a lot of bike for the money it really really is like when I look at the DRZ supermoto that's a great bike but that bike has gone up in price to like $7,500 or something like that or $7,800 maybe that's that's quite a bit of money I mean for 5200 bucks this bike is awesome now, I do wish they had given you uh, a switch to turn off the ABS. You can see there's like a blank switch here. And on the Dual Sport model, this is a button to turn the ABS off to the back. I don't know why they didn't do that on the Supermoto. Maybe there's some regulation about that, that they couldn't do it. But that's a big letdown. But I know if you wanted to really Supermoto this for real, like Supermoto race it or whatever, or you just want to slide around because you know how to do that, you could just pull the ABS fuse from under the seat and do it that way. I'm not really supposed to condone that, right, as a professional test rider or whatever, but I'm just saying that's something that is an option. All right, can you off-road a supermoto? We've got some boulders here, some rock steps, we've got a little off-road area. You're not really buying this bike to do a bunch of off-road riding with, but the fact is supermotors are based on dirt bikes so you have the ground clearance almost nine inches of ground clearance you have a long travel suspension you have a dirt bike chassis the only difference is 
you've got the smaller wheels with the street tires that don't have really much grip in the dirt but if you know how to manage the traction you can totally get away with it just don't go riding in mud and snow and stuff like that and of course supermoto the roots of supermoto like i mentioned before they go back to a type of racing that <coughs> On the same race area, the same racetrack, you'd have dirt and street combined into one race course. So, of course, you can go off-road. So, let me kind of give you just a little bit of a taste of what it's like to do this. Now, I don't have a skid plate, so I don't want to bash the frame or the oil pan into any big rocks. But I want to show you how good the suspension is and how good... I mean, it's basically a dirt bike, right? With street tires. So, of course, it's going to be good off-road. <laughs> We'll just go right up this boulder. No problem. <laughs> the suspension is a little bouncy because, you know, it's tuned, it's valved and sprung for street riding, which needs to be a little bit stiffer, but it's not bad. So you can absolutely have a total blast riding a bike like this off-road. It's light, it's stable, it's nimble, it's got good ground clearance. You can plop down these rocks here. Whoa! Okay, there's a, <laughs> I almost tucked in the front end there because I have to remember I'm not on a knobby tire, so it's very slippery. Whoa! <laughs> I mean, it's an absolute blast until you start sliding because you've got no traction. Let's go down these rocks, boop! And then, ah, I wish I could slide the back tire. But the ABS is on. Let's do this one more time. Up the rocks, boom, ba boom. There we go. It's a lot of fun. So that's the versatility that I was talking about with these bikes. They're just great for stuff like this. Go through the big rut, boom. The suspension's great. It can absorb everything. So yes, you absolutely can do off-roading with a supermoto, and it's a hell of a lot of fun. Pardon my French. All right, now, so what are the competitors to this bike? So if you're looking at this bike, what else should you be looking at? Well, unfortunately, if you want supermoto bikes, there really are not a lot being produced today, especially at this more beginner level. I think we have to start by talking about Suzuki's DRZ400 supermoto. The DRZ400 platform has been going on for, gosh, over 20 years now, I believe. It's pretty crazy that they're still building that bike. It's a testament to how good it is. Now, comparing this to the DRZ, um, some advantages to the KLX has. The KLX is lower to the ground, it's more affordable, and it has the optional ABS, and it has a six-speed transmission compared to only the five-speed transmission on the DRZ. The five-speed transmission on the DRZ400 is pretty limiting, and if you want to understand why, go watch my review of the DRZ400 dual sport bike, which I'll link here below, and I'm also doing the DRZ400 Supermoto coming up here soon. Now, it is true that the DRZ has a lot more horsepower than this bike. So you're, you're looking at, you know, whatever this bike is around uh, 20 horsepower, whatever it is, compared to the DRZ upwards around 35 to 40 horsepower. That's a huge difference in power. The other difference is the DRZ uses a carburetor. Uh, this is a fuel injected bike. Now, I far prefer fuel injection because it's simpler, it's less likely to have issues, it's less likely to get clogged up if you let the bike sit, it starts and idles smoother and more consistently, so for me it's fuel injection all the way. Now what about Kawasaki's own KLX 300 Supermoto? So I touched on this earlier, the KLX 300 is going to give you more power, more torque, uh, a nicer spec of suspension with adjustments on the suspension. It's a little bit taller. It's about $1,000 more expensive. So you're just going to have to make the choice. Do you want that extra five to eight horsepower? You're okay with the extra seat height. Do you want a better suspension? Um, then you should look at going to that bike. Now, it is interesting that they do not offer a switchable ABS or in ABS whatsoever on the 300. What they do on the 230, which is kind of strange. Maybe they'll address that in future model years. Now, 
should you get a supermoto or a dual sport bike when we're looking at sort of these competitors? Well, that's an interesting question because Kawasaki does make this, of course, in two different dual sport models. The S dual sport model, which is really low, and I just reviewed that, um, or the standard height 230, and they, of course, they make the KLX 300 dual sport as well. So choosing between a dual sport and a supermoto, here's the differences. Uh, <laughs> a dual sport bike has skinnier tires, knobby tires that are made to go off-road, and it's the bike's just set up more for going off-roading. However, the supermoto bikes have really the same level of ground clearance and suspension travel. The only difference being is they've got the smaller 17-inch wheels with the wider, stickier uh, street tires. So I guess I would say if you're not really planning to do hardly any off-road or maybe just a little bit of dirt roads, you should look at the supermoto bikes because they can be a little bit lower to the ground. They stick, they have way better traction on the pavement. They're better on twisty roads. Uh, and you can still do a little bit of off-roading, a little bit of dirt roads if you want. However, if you're going to be on the trail a lot or you want that extra versatility of being able to go in rough off-road terrain without having to change out tires and wheels, then you should be getting a dual sport. Now here's kind of a cool trick that a lot of people do. They'll buy the supermoto version of the bike, whether it's a DRZ or a KLX, and then they'll get the dual sport wheel set. Now you'll have to verify that that's going to fit for the particular bike you're looking at and brakes and things like that are going to fit and be compatible. You might need different brake rotors. Uh, caliper spacers, whatever it might be, but that is something to think about. You could buy one of these bikes and have two different wheel sets, two different bikes. Final thoughts on the 2023 Kawasaki KLX 230 Supermoto. This is a fun, approachable bike that can make more experienced riders happy if they want something versatile to throw around in the dirt or on supermoto tracks. It could also make beginners very happy because it's relatively affordable, it's not too high off the ground, it doesn't have too much intimidating power, it's got a good ABS braking system to give you that safety net on the street, and it's just an overall really cool, versatile package. If you're out there looking for a supermoto bike, there really are not a lot of options to choose from. If you want something super high-end and premium, KTM has their 690 supermoto, which is a high-spec, high-power bike that costs, you know, well over double what this bike does. So if you're looking in this more affordable supermoto segment, there's not many choices. You should look at the other, some of the other bikes I mentioned, the DRZ 400 Supermoto, Kawasaki's own KLX 300 Supermoto, but there's really not a lot out there. And I don't think that for $5,000, you can really go wrong with this bike right here. I hope this review was useful and informative. If it was, please support Big Rock Moto. There's ways to do that in the description down below. Other than that, please ride safe and I'll see you out there.